Hi, I'm Tayo, and I'll be conducting this interview uh, with Voice Mag um, to ask you about your project. Okay. So, um, first things first, would you like to introduce yourself for the people watching? Yeah, uh, my name's Charlotte. Uh, I'm an artist. I made the piece of work for the festival. Um, and it kind of studies a kind of geographical location on the Thames, the history of it. So um, would you like to introduce Constant for the people? Okay, so it's, um, as I said, it's a piece that looks at a particular location on the Thames. It's um, a pebble beach that's on the Isle of Dogs and it kind of explores the history of it. Um, it looks at um, a man that used to live there in the 1700s and he moved there because he kind of had a difficult time in life and he wanted to isolate himself and separate himself from the rest of the world. And I kind of thought it, it, it was a different place, obviously, than the Isle of Dogs. It was quite a wilderness. It just uh, kind of was like kind of farmland and marshland. And uh, so he went there to isolate himself. And I was kind of just interested in the history of that. And you know, a man going to isolate himself on an island, the Isle of Dogs, which is within the island of the UK. And, you know, I kind of thought it was an interesting story to look at. Awesome. So are you like interested in the idea of isolation in your work then? Um, not particularly isolation, but I'm kind of interested in the city and the history of the city and as it's grown and how it kind of shapes us and affects us, the residents that live within it. So um, why did you choose the Folly House Beach specifically for your work? Um, I used to live um, quite close to it and I like to walk a lot in my practice. It kind of involves just walking really and kind of experiencing the city and seeing what's happening there on a daily basis and kind of enjoy the beach there and then kind of it went from there. Okay. And what is some of the history behind this beach? Um, so, I mean, I suppose the, the Isle of Dogs itself, it's uh, been involved a lot with trade over the years and still is now in financial trade. And um, that, that's a particular area of it, the docks. But I think the island itself, uh, the geographical nature of it, that um, it was quite separate from uh, the local area because of like tides and everything that um, before it was really developed, it kind of disappeared most of it when the tide was high. But I think since then, even up till like kind of recent years, it's still, and even now, it's kind of kept quite a separate identity to the rest of the local area. Awesome. Um, so why did you choose like film to make this specific, to tell this specific story? Um, I use film and moving image a lot in my work um, because I think, you know, especially with smartphones and everything now, it's just uh, something that people have a lot of access to, mm -hmm. as in us taking photos and taking film, which again is like a real recent development. Um, and I think it really changes the way that we look at the world, like us, uh, everyone being able to catch up, capture like that kind of moving world um, so easily. I think it's kind of changed the way we look at things and the way we see things. Uh, so I think that's probably why I tend to use it quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so in what ways has this project been affected by the pandemic? Um, well, I suppose it's, it's quite interesting, I think, because uh, the beach itself is never really very busy. So I think mm -hmm. the actual piece of work is going to go ahead in quite a similar way to how it would have um, if the pandemic wouldn't have happened. But um, now obviously we kind of added the live stream element to it, which I think kind of enhances the work really because it really kind of sets it in uh, kind of uh, our world now because of, you know, live stream and everything like that. Again, is something that we all use, so. Yeah. 
So uh, that live stream uh, means much more people, much, way more people have access to it, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. And again, like it's, you know, we've got our phones all the time. So, you know, it's kind of connecting mm. it in that yeah. way. So what's your specific relationship with the Thames and with like rivers and the water in general? Um, well, I don't know. I think I have kind of, in recent years, I've kind of got this growing interest to the Thames because um, I grew up in the kind of uh, London suburbs, um, kind of the East London Essex borders. Um, and my family, um, generation before I lived in central London for a long time so I've always kind of had this feeling of us being washed down the river um so I don't know yeah I, I really connect with it in that way yeah uh does it serve as kind of an inspiration for your work um yeah definitely and I think as well like the river is uh the banks of the river particularly is really um you can see the, the history of the city so clearly, like that in other places in uh, London, you can't, so obviously. Mm -hmm. But you can just immediately, kind of every view that you can see of the Thames, you can see so many different layers. Yeah, so what, um, what part of this history of the river particularly interests you? Um, well, I suppose, yeah, you can kind of see our human footprint Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously in it, you know, like I said, you can see the different architecture, um, you can see different uh, kind of residential, uh, commercial property, uh, the people that are walking up and down it, the people that are working on the river. Is there like a specific period of the history you're more drawn to or is it kind of like a more holistic thing? Uh, no, I think it's just, again, like I said, like in my practice, it really involves me just walking around the city quite a lot. And yeah, I think it is just things as I find them kind of thing. So yeah, mm -hmm. no real specific era. Do you think people should maybe like walk around and just appreciate the things around them more? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I would definitely say that <laughs> because it's something I really enjoy to do. And I think you just see so much more of life when you're on the kind of street level and you're yeah. really in it. Uh, you know, you hear different people's conversations. Uh, you know, you can just tell so much about, um, you know, the people around you if you're kind of amongst mm -hmm. them. <laughs> yeah, so like that being on the street level and being involved with people is kind of integral to your work. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely, I think yeah. so. That makes sense. I guess so that's something we can take, right? That we should all kind of walk around and kind of appreciate the things around us more. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, I, I do it as well anyway, but, you know, you can so easily kind of be glued to the screen of your phone, mm. have earphones in. And yeah, like I said, I do it all the time as well. But, you know, just making that conscious effort to, you know, kind of put your phone in your pocket and your earphones around your mm. neck and then just for five minutes like listening and seeing a bit more <laughs> yeah so um one last thing uh where can people find you and your work and stuff like that online or in person um well i suppose on online is easier um uh my instagram feed um it's at and then three underscores panel P A W N E W L seven three seven. Um, I haven't. I have a, a YouTube channel, but it's kind of just um, for me at the moment. I haven't really got a lot of work online because I think I'm just happy to keep it uh, for when I want to show it. <laughs> mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you.